Hello, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Between the Lines podcast. We are coming to you live from the interview studios here in downtown Warren, and I am joined by a very important figure in the Warren, Ohio uh, sports scene. Anybody in the city knows him, whether you went to Warren G. Harding, whether you went to Howland, or whether you went to Kennedy. This man is good in all three places. He's done so much for the youth in our community when it comes to sports. Danny Stella. What's up, baby? Don C, what's up, baby? Appreciate you. Warren, Ohio, what's good? Shout out to everybody in Warren, Howland High School, JFK High School, Summit Academy. What's up, everybody? What's up, Dante? How you feeling, baby? I'm I'm good, coach. I'm good. I'm good. And uh, let me just say, first off, uh, for those of you who recognize me uh, from WFMJ, thank you once again for welcoming welcoming me into your speakers, whether you're listening to this on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts and also on your YouTube screens. I'm very grateful to this man right here and, of course, Interviews founder, uh, Linnell, for uh, allowing me to be a part of this great upstart media company. And uh, this is a new experiment. We're trying to uh, give people who love high school football in our area because, you know, with the season coming up, it's such an integral part of the culture Absolutely, of living in the Youngstown let's go. area. We got a lot of storylines coming into this 2023 season, and let's get into it. Obviously, let's start with the defending Division Three champions, the Canfield Cardinals. Now, of course, Coach, the Cardinals coming off an historic season last year. Mm -hmm. Only one loss, and that was to the Cheney Cowboys on the road to Rayan Stadium. But outside of that, their season was pretty much perfect. They were able to beat Bloom Carroll 35-14 to in the Division Three state championship game yep. in Canton. Now, of course, quarterback Brock Lowry, he needs no introduction. He is in Bloomington right now getting ready for his season uh, with the Hoosiers. He's gone. And also wide receiver Jack Davis and Gavin Ram Ramon. And also, first of all, if any of us, whether it be me or coach, get your names wrong, please let we us apologize. know. We apologize. We apologize. And please let us know via email right. or any way you can get a hold of interviews, and we will definitely and correct And more importantly, that. we apologize to the families. We mean no disrespect. Absolutely. But if we're wrong, please hit us up correct us we want to be as accurate as possible and coach coming into this year i mean you know we, yep. we've been able to go to a lot of their scrimmages they have a three-way quarterback duel to replace brock lowry but also they have one of the best um athletes in our area coming into this year danny inglis he rushed for 816 yards last year yep. 12 touchdowns and he will be taking his talents uh, to iowa state next year so First of all, let's give a shout out to Canfield. Um, congratulations on the state championship last year. Congratulations to Coach Mike Pamplaski. Absolutely, um, it's hard to win a state championship. So shout out to the staff. Shout out to the players. Shout out to the community. All right, now the focusing on this year, we got to see Canfield um, last week against Salem. The one thing that stick out when you look at Canfield, they're big. They're big. They're strong. But they got a the right mix of strength, bodies with some athletes. You look at Danny Inglis. He got good straight line speed, that tailback. He can hit his head on the goalpost at any time. Um, I think it's going to be Paul Bendis that gets denied at quarterback. He's also a starter at corner, which means he gives you dual threat ability. He played a little bit last year. He played on the defense last year, so he's been in the arena. So I'm pretty sure Coach will feel good about handing the keys over to him. Um, when you look at him up front, they got Vince Luce and Santino Coca. So you got two experienced, big, nasty, tough bodies to lead you up front offensively and defensively. Two kids they got that a lot of people don't talk about. When you're watching Canfield, I want you to watch out for two people. Number two, Jake Snyder. I think he legit 6'6", Dante. Big receiver. So when you get inside the 25, you get inside the 20 in that red zone, he's a threat. And then you look at junior Angelo DeLuca. DeLucia, sorry. Once again, sorry we messed up the name. Big time. Junior already got two offers. Tight end, defensive end combo, about 6'4", 235, 240, strong hands, physical. And then when you round it all up, they got a great coaching staff, great community that's going to give them support. So look out for the Canfield Cardinals. Um, it's hard to say if they're going to win and repeat. It's so hard to win one, let alone repeat. But I think they got themselves to the point where as a program, every year they'll be in week 12, week 13 every year. So. And Canfield, along with South Range, who we're going to get into after them, mm -hmm. uh, they were the first Youngstown public school programs to win state since Poland did it in 1999. That's big. That, that's, that's just that's such a big. that that's huge. That's yep. huge. But we get into um, their schedule, coach. Mm -hmm. um, and on defense, they also returned seven starters. So a lot of their yep. defense, which was just as dominant last year, is going to be returning. But uh, week one, they open up with West Branch at home. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, they played West Branch on the road in Beloit in week one. West Branch is also a very good program, a team that's had a lot of success like them in recent seasons. And they were able to respond really well on the road last year in week 
week one. But uh, again, people like Brock Lowry are gone. Jack yep. Davis is gone. But they still have a lot of talent. And week yep. one, you know, West Branch is one of their rivals. People in Beloit are going to be ready for that game because, um, again, they, they have they have great athletes as well. Absolutely. But also another interesting opponent they have is week two. They're going to take a jump flip from playing – you know, one of the better teams in their own area to going to Central Ohio to play at Mansfield Senior. So that'll be a good road test um, early in the gate. But um, anybody in Canfield will tell you that the biggest game on their schedule is Poland, Battle of 224. But with me and you, yep. it's clearly September 15th when they host the Cheney Cowboys. The only blemish on their great season last year yep. was that close loss at Ray and Stadium to the Cowboys. Who was it, 16-13, I, I believe, think, Dante? I, I think it was. I think it was 16-13. The last second pick uh, last second that Shaney pick. was able to have. I, again, they played well, and the Cowboys <laughs> are going to be – we're going to get into them later. They're yep. going to be fun to watch this year too. But to me, that's one of the biggest games in the area on the regular season. Slate. Absolutely, and I'm sure to, to a man, the coaches probably won't say it because, you know, as a coach, you want to take it day by day and week to week. I know those kids are geeked up and can't wait to week five because, like you said, they went 14-1 and one last year. The only blemish on their record is Cheney. And they also know Cheney's a good enough program where it's not going to be just an easy go play them back and let's go kick their butt and get a win. That's going to be one of the better football games in the regular season, right. like you said, in the area. So I can't wait to see that. Um, talking about them real quick, just defensively, like you said, they got six, seven starters back. So I think they'll be fine defensively, led by Danny Inglis, of course. Um, which I think he'll play on the defensive side of the ball when he get to Iowa State. So defensively, when I look at teams like Canfield, any team really with a good coaching staff, they're going to keep it simple. They want to set an edge. They want to run to the ball, get a lot of hats to the ball. The more hats to the ball, the better. We'll create turnovers. We won't miss a lot of tackles. And I'm sure they'll start right there. And, again, they got the type of bodies up front and the type of athletes up back to make up for that defense. So offensively and defensively, they'll be fine. Like you said, we talked about the schedule week one with West Branch. That'll kind of let them know where they are early in the season. So they go through the uh, hiccups of two, week two, three, four. And when they get to week five in the back stretch of the season, that's when they want to be playing their best. But I know they got Canfield. I mean, Chaney, I'm sorry. I know they got Chaney circling on their schedule. For sure. and, and again, West Branch is going through the same thing that they're going through. I mean, <coughs> yep. Drew to Shields, who's at Kent State right now. Shout out to my guy, Drew Shields. Shout fellow, out Kent State. Fellow Flash, baby. Um, he is at Dick Stadium yep. right now getting ready for the season. So West Branch is going through the same thing they're going through. So that's going to be one of the best games in our area going yep. into week one. But uh, let's shift gears to the other team that was able to win state last year. And ironically, a team right down the road from Canfield, right which street. is the South Range Raiders. Now they were able to beat Ironton 53-27 to in the mm -hmm. Division 5 state title last year, right before Canfield uh, took the field. Uh, yep. One of the biggest storylines of the offseason is the retirement of the Hall of Fame great coach in Dan Yeagley. I was able to interview him a lot when I was at WFMJ on their path to get to the state championship. Mm -hmm. He's just a great football mind. And again, congratulations to Coach Yeagley on a great career, Hall of Fame uh, career. Absolutely. Congratulations, but they have, Coach. But they have somebody who's been in their program for a very long time as a yep. player and as an assistant for a long time, and uh, that's Dave Rock. He yep. enters his first year in North Lima as the leader of the Raiders, and he inherits you know, a team that has known nothing but winning, even before they win one state, mm -hmm. a team, a program that has known nothing but winning yep. in the past five to six years. Because, coach, before I let you get into it, mm -hmm. they have not lost a regular season game since October 4th of 2018. Yes. That's pure dominance. It's pretty crazy. It's almost, you know, it's, pure dominance. it's hard to even believe. But like I talked about with Canfield, I'm going to say the same thing about South Range. First of all, congratulations to Coach Yeagley. Congratulations on a great career. Congratulations on winning the state championship and going out the right way. Congratulations to the team last year, community coaches, everybody. You guys had a great year. Um, but going into this year, it's probably going to look a little bit different for a lot of those people that go and watch South Range Raiders play football. But the best part is, like you said, he's handing the keys over to somebody who knows what the program is about in and out, through and through. Coach played there, was a great defensive coordinator underneath Coach Yeagley, and now he's ready to take the program over. So. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited for Coach. Um, I don't know Coach very well, but I know just when you win that program and you're from that community and you played in that high school, I know it's, that's very exciting for him. So, Coach, shout out to you, Coach. Good luck this year. I know we don't know each other a lot personally, but I'm rooting for you, Coach, and good luck this year, man. And again, congratulations to the Raiders yeah, last Absolutely, year. Coach. Um, but before we get into their schedule, we talked about, you know, losses that Canfield has. Yep. But if you look at, like, what South Range is losing and take it from me, a 
someone that shot a lot of their games last year, someone mm-hmm. that did a lot of their coverage on their way to state. This offense was one of the best in the entire state, and it was because of quarterback Billy Skirpak, Shane Lindstrom, Aiden Leone, and J.B. Krause. Was this so was an deep. absolute unit of athletes that could just, once they get the rock, they could just yeah. take they it down the field and, and score. Yes. It's just pure offensive domination. Yes. And they come into this season like Canfield. They have mm-hmm. a quarterback competition, but it's a two-way race. Yep. Um, but they also return running back Blake Ewart. Yep. He was a 1,000-yard rusher last year, 13 touchdowns, just as critical to their offensive success as those people that I just named, Absolutely. but also defensively, again, their defense was just as off, yes. dominant as their offense. There were three of 16 teams last year that were able to score more. There were only three, excuse right. me, yep. only three of 16 teams last year that were able to score more than 14 points, and they have four starters returning on defense, so they're going to look very good. Yep, number one, like, they lost a lot of firepower last year. They were yep. deep and loaded. This year, they got Blake Ewer coming back. Watch out for Aiden Dominguez. I think the offense is probably not going to be as explosive as last year. I mean, how could you be when you lost that many talented bodies? Plus, you have a defensive head coach. Absolutely. Plus, you got a defensive head coach. So, I know he more so want to play probably to the run game, which this year's uh, talent and roster they have, it fits perfect. Watch out for those two guys. Again, Blake Ewart, Aiden Dominguez. I can see them being a one-two punch in the running game and really kind of carrying the load of the offense until whoever's the quarterback gets his feet wet. And I know they have some athletes outside. But like you said, you got a new coach, deep as a coordinator, deep as a background. So he's not going to want to get out there and just air it out a lot if he don't have the quarterback he can trust. So expect those two horses they got in the back to be able to carry the load. And it's South Range. They built the program up. They're going to be fine. They're going to be tough. They're going to be well coached. And they're going to have playmakers. So be looking out for the Raiders. Again, it's hard to say if you can win it again. That's too tough. But I expect them to be in week 12, week 13, almost every year now. So Now let's just get into their schedule now. If, if, if Now, Coach, everybody says it's easy to say, oh, when you're a state champion, people are going to be gunning for you the next year. Right. But if a schedule really reflected that saying, it would be South Range's schedule in 2023. They open up at Springfield. Now, Springfield, they're another program that's seen a lot of success. They yep. had back-to-back state championship appearances in recent years so and they're going to be going to new middletown Mm -hmm. to play them that's going to be a hostile environment on the road and it's going to be interesting to see how the raiders respond in week one that's going to be another intriguing matchup week one and then right after that they play green at home they open up the newly renovated um stadium that they have but green green's a team that's given youngstown area opponents you know problems you know, for a while. So that's going to be, that's going to be an interesting mm-hmm. matchup in week two. Then they play Warren JFK at home. We're going to get into the Eagles later, yep. but they're going to play another team that's had a lot of success in recent years at home. That's going to be a very highly anticipated matchup. And the big thing, when I look at the Raiders schedule coach is we, you know, their next games after that, the next three games, yep. they open up NEA play their first three NEA game, any NEA games yep. are all on the road at Lakeview, at Struthers, at Poland. That, that, that's going to be very tough. That's going to be tough. And I guarantee you when coach comes out of those three weeks, he'll know exactly where his team is, exactly what they need to get better at. And he also know their identity. Cause like I looked at, when I looked at their schedule, also Dante, that stretch really sticks out to you. But again, I know coach, He's want to take every, every everything a day at a time and a week at a time and kind of build to that. And when you come out of that three-week stretch on the road against those three teams, you're going to know exactly where your team at, where we need to get better at, and what's our identity. So that's going to be an exciting time in the Raiders community, and that's a big-time schedule. And then also, again, I think I said this earlier, they play Niles on the back end. I'm not saying Niles is going to be a state champion or anything like that. But now this is probably going to be one of the better, most talented now teams they had in a couple of years. So I even expect that on the back end of the schedule to be a good game. So shout out to South Range. They got a hard schedule. Like you said, when you win the state championship, that schedule goes up and up. But they built the program up to where they can handle it. I'm sure they're excited about it. And it's going to be a big season in Raider country, baby. Absolutely. It's going to be a great season for two defending state mm-hmm. champions who represent Canfield, the city that cares as they say. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, when we come back, we're going to take a short break. But um, when we get back, we are going to talk about one of the most talented teams, arguably the most talented Maybe team the in our most. area. Maybe. Absolutely. Maybe. The Austin Town Fitch Falcons. Don't touch that dial. You're watching Between the Lines. Don't Coach go Stella. nowhere. Stay right there, baby. <laughs> 